all right. of a sudden it was he has cancer it was very very fast and it was all around the time of our wedding i didn't know if he was going to make it or not experiencing those emotions yeah. and being at the same time trying to like tr celebrate and yeah. be excited that be i'm happy. getting married it's so weird when you experience two things at the exact same time and like how sometimes emotions can be so linear and so parallel two things can be true at once i held him in my arms i watched him leave this world and i thought there goes my heart <laughs> it's so dramatic oh my god but no. it was like that's what i felt and i i felt devastated i screamed i cried my husband was just holding me because he didn't like we didn't know what to do he was gone you know Taylor. Well, Taylor. 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 <laughs> you got three Taylors. <laughs> Woo! Taylor, welcome to The Squeeze. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Of course, we're honored. I really wanted to crack this joke and say, how many Taylors do you think it takes to record a podcast? Oh. oh. I think... That's I think a good we need one. Taylor Swift to <laughs> yeah. fill out this room. That, you know? I know. We do have one more, one more seat. Yeah. I just had to say that. Okay, we can move on. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll have to recreate the Spider-Man meme after this. Oh, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we took a photo with her where the three of us were, you know that meme where it's like this, the cartoon one where they're all pointing? We did that oh, with yeah, her. Oh, yeah, like you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll have to do that <laughs> as well. They did, in fact, recreate the photo. Sweet. Okay, so we start every interview off with this little jar with a game called Citrus Got Real. There's oh. like fun. It's a good thing you remembered that because I definitely was going to forget it. The game? We forget to play this half of the time. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> but we just we're like... supposed to start each episode with it. And we're doing it today. I know. Way to go. Wow. It's going to be a good day. I'm proud of you guys. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, it's also the first time we've recorded in here in like a month too. So I am surprised that, I, a hot sack. that I remember that. <laughs> but regardless of that, we remembered. And if you would like to pull okay. um, a little thing from that. Um, Cheers. I didn't place that one there. So I don't know what it says. Just for everyone watching. It was like really sure. crazy. Sure. If you were a wrestler, what would be <laughs> your entrance theme song? Oh, oh. wow. Ooh, I have a really good answer for this, but uh, you've been thinking it about would this? be a it would be a bad song. Ah, it would be an interesting choice. So my song would be The Chain by Fleetwood Mac because yes. it's I Fleetwood Mac is one of my favorite bands of all time. Yeah. And it is my family's favorite song okay. and i just got my first tattoo that says never break the chain I in my mom's handwriting in. oh, oh wow. shut up so oh my gosh my whole family has the same tattoo Wait, and we I have a it closer look we have it in different places i was looking at that earlier I know, isn't it? Doesn't she have really pretty handwriting? Jeez. Everyone's like, wow, that's really pretty. I'm like, it's my mom's handwriting. That's Aww. so that's so sweet. So that's I what that. that would be my song just because it's very sentimental. And, and then I walk in, they'd be like, what is <laughs> the chain? Is that like is interesting? That Fleetwood Mac? It's not like a I hype like song, it. but it's yeah. like it's one of my favorite songs. Yeah. I, like <laughs> I feel that. What that's would you really cool. Um uh, Holler Back Girl. Holler Back Girl. Yeah. Gwen Stefani? Yeah. I like that for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're super excited to have you. Um, congratulations are in order. You just celebrated your one year wedding anniversary. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <Congrats>. I did. <laughs> yes, Thank you did. Thank you. I have been married for one year. <laughs> it's it a looked... big one. Our first birthday. <laughs> <laughs> oh my it gosh, looked insane. That. Like no, the pictures are crazy. Insane. I was so excited to see the photos. Yeah. I was it looked like, unbelievable. Oh, he you. looked amazing. Thank you. All the friends. And we got married in my hometown in Colorado. Oh. And my parents lived like five minutes down the road from the hotel where we got married oh yeah yeah oh my gosh oh my gosh yeah so special it was really it was really amazing and really meaningful and we had you know all of our favorite people in this place where i grew up and it was so wild and so cool to see people from all walks of life from basically all over the world coming to yeah. winter park colorado i was oh like gosh. what's happening Aww. like this is so fun so for for our family and for me it was really special yeah was there anything you did because we get asked this question a lot yeah was there anything you did um that you would recommend to somebody 
um, yes. to like implement into their wedding day or wedding experience. So yeah. we did, I, I don't think this is a, a like a unknown thing, but I got advice from my sister-in-law because she got married the year before we did. Oh yeah. And she um, had a little moment after the wedding with her husband, like 30 yeah. minutes of alone time Quiet. after, right after the ceremony. Um, and she, she loved that they did that. And then when, you know, it was, we were getting married, she said that was like the best day, best part of the day yeah. was that scheduled kind of alone time. Yeah. So I, I did it as well. And we, you know, did the ceremony, we walked down, everybody goes up to the cocktail and we went upstairs above where our dinner was and we had our appetizer brought to us and we oh, had, yeah. you know, champagne together and mm. we got each other gifts and we exchanged Aww. gifts and it was just really special to be alone right after yeah. getting yeah. married and just looking at each other and being like, can you believe that just happened? Yeah. Cause yeah. you know, you plan this this thing for so long, you yeah. know, we were engaged for two years. So oh, we were wow. planning our wedding for two years. Jeez. So when we did get married, we were just sitting there. I can't believe yeah. this day is here. And we yeah. just walked, yeah. I just walked down the aisle and we both said, I do. That's so wild. Yeah. So it was really nice having that time together. Yeah. Um, and I thought that was really special. So I, I think that's a common thing that a lot of people actually do. It's but, needed though. Yeah, but you I have I, to. I yeah. just think, to reiterate that it's a thing for a reason. So yeah. take that time to yeah. be together. Yeah. yeah. And I think, get the food in you. Yeah. Yeah. And eat. Cause that's yeah. the other thing you is, you know, be eating down there. people yeah. are giving speeches and toasts. You forget to eat. There's a lot going on, you yeah. know, and you're kind of all over the place. We had our appetizers. So we were kind of ahead of everybody else. Yeah. So when the appetizers were brought, we were able to go outside and do sunset photos, just the two of us. And oh, like yeah. the sun was setting and yeah. we saw a moose and her baby Stop. running across the field. I swear I have foot video footage of wow. it. It really happened. I'm not lying. It was oh, amazing. My gosh. It was so cool. Jeez. So we got, you know, we got to do that and then we came back and main course was served. And then we, you know, I love that. We were just, they, we were there. So. Yeah. You know, did we intentionally do that or did that just happen that we because we had like the time where everyone was in cocktail hour and then we like kind of waited. But then we went our like where the reception was. They had like an upstairs, but it like looked down like it wasn't enclosed or anything. But we for some reason we got there first. Right. So we went upstairs. Oh, we we and, walked in there first. Yeah. Because the cocktail hour was outside. We got to watch everybody enter the reception area oh God, and nobody fun. knew we were up there. Oh, my God. That's so fun. Yeah, so we got to cool. like here like we had we like had worked on this like entrance thing with like these like hanging like vines and flowers and we had like live butterflies. I love butterflies. Oh I have a little tattoo, but it's like really meaningful to me. So we had oh. like lots of little like butterfly things, but it was really cool to like watch people come in and some of them like had like the butterfly like no. in their hand and they were like, it's the cutest thing. It ever. was really cool to like yeah. get to watch that. Did you do a first look or no? No, we didn't do, we didn't okay. do a first look. I did one with my dad and my brother Okay, and my grandpa as well. Um, and that, that was really special and really nice. Cause yeah. you know, my dad, you know, they, I don't have very many men in my life. It's because I'm from most, a family of mostly women. Yeah. So it's, you know, just my dad and my brother and, and, and my grandpa as well. So it was really special, like being with them. And then they were like, you know, it was so cute. It was, I did a separate one with my grandpa alone and then one together with my dad and my my brother. And they were yeah. both standing there and they turn around and Aww. they're like so tall. And, you know, my dad is like, you know, the man and he Aww. just, they're like crying. I'm like, hello. <laughs> I'm here. Yeah. yeah. It was so cute. We and did one. Cause I was like, I'm going to be unwell. Well, originally we thought Taylor was going to be unwell. <laughs> so that's why we did the first look. And then I ended up being like more unwell. Yeah. And that crying was a more. Surprise. Yeah. yeah. It was fun. Cause I didn't know what his, uh, like tux look like because he like had he didn't show me I don't know you had one like just made. had to make it about me we we it was a first <laughs> no. look for both of us it was, <laughs> no it was a first look for both of us so it was fun because he was like I want to surprise you I was like just oh. make sure the colors are okay um, <laughs> make sure the colors match and you can do whatever you want um, but yeah that was a fun little a fun little moment for us um, what's been your like favorite part of married life or has it just kind of like 
felt the same as it did before? It's interesting. I think it's, there's a little bit of both. It's the same, but there's just something about it that is different. Um, for me, in terms of our routine and what our lifestyle is like, nothing really changed. Yeah. And yeah. that felt really nice. Cause it was just, you know, we just, we're, com we're just doing our thing together and it was no big upheavals or no major yeah. changes after we got married. Um, and it was just kind of nice to feel like nothing was different. Yeah. But then there's also this feeling of, you know, you took a vow to commit to this person. This is your partner. And, you know, there's that promise there between the two of you. So I think that also is what makes it different and why I think it changes like uh, just a little bit. I think emotionally it changes yeah. a little bit, you know, cause you feel a little closer. You've gone through this together. You've decided yeah. we're going to do this. We've made this promise. And I think that's kind of why I love, you know, marriage in a sense, not for yeah. what it traditionally stands for, but you know, if people want to get married just for the, the vows and the promise and, you know, to say that and like celebrate your love with people, I think yeah. that was, a, that's kind of how I looked at getting married. So totally. yeah, I love that. Yeah. That's kind of, I feel like we were kind of similar with that. Yeah. I mm -hmm. mean, we were together by the time we got married, we'd been together for five, five years. Yeah. Um, so, and we like went through COVID, went through like, I did nursing school, worked as a nurse. Like we oh both went through a lot of mental health stuff together. So mm -hmm. By the time we like got married, I felt like we were like, okay, like we've actually done a lot of life. So we know like and everybody would ask us all the time. How does it feel? Does it feel different? The and first like, year's the hardest. Uh, we're like, when is that going to start? Yeah. Like, <laughs> all the time. Everyone asked me like, how does, is it yeah, any different? Like, oh, oh, how's married life? Yeah. Like exactly the same. Yeah. yeah. But I feel like no. there is that, like when we got engaged, that was the biggest, like, you know, the next morning after we got married, we were like, you know, that was such a fun day. We got to like do all these things with like people we love the most but I don't feel like anything really changed when we got engaged I was like I think it, both of us were like yeah like this is it like in our mind we were like married then. that was like for us and I feel like the wedding was almost more to like celebrate with everyone yeah you know yeah that was fun but I do feel like I agree with you like the because we are like married now it just like when you when you're going through like a hard thing or you're talking through something or even something that's like fun and like you're celebrating i feel like it has like a little bit of a different like tone like you know we took this vow to like be together forever and we both take that like very seriously so when mm -hmm. you know when we're working through conflict i feel like it like it has almost like a security to it which i feel like is like really special yeah that's a good word like yeah. a safety security yeah. like a, a sense of you know, in this together yeah. partnership, I think. Beautiful. Oh. Beautiful. Good job, Taylor. Good job, Taylor. Good job, Taylor. Thanks. Thanks, Taylor. <laughs> Thank you, Taylor. <laughs> this is going to be a continuing joke. I'm sorry. But it, people who are listening on audio are going to be like so confused. Like, we're just like, Taylor, Taylor said that. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor, Taylor. I love this for us, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Um, okay. So I just learned, are, were you born in 97? I was born in 96. 96. Yes. Okay. So I'm 97 and I didn't realize that we were like basically the same age <laughs> because I felt like when I was in high school, I was watching you like on Victoria's Secret and I was like, wait, what? This is crazy. So <laughs> when did you, when did you start modeling? I started modeling when I was 14. Okay. And then I started doing Victoria's Secret when I was 18. Wow. Okay. So I was really, I was really young when I started in the whole, you know, VS scene. I was, I should have been in high school. I was. I will have been a would have been a senior in high school when I did my first Victoria's Secret fashion show. Oh wow! So, but I I left school when I was like four, 15. So okay, yeah. Was that something that you had like wanted to do or? Yes. Okay. I mean, I I didn't love school. I didn't love being in class. You yeah. know, I didn't excel. Yeah. Academically. <laughs> I just was like, I was just very bored, you know, shaking yeah. my leg, looking, checking the clock. When can I get out of here? When yeah. is this over? There was two classes I enjoyed and that was art class and music class. Yeah. Yeah. That was it. And everything else I was kind of like, huh, when is this, this over? Yeah. yeah. Checking got, my watch as if I had a watch yeah. in elementary school. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, so for me, it was really exciting when I, when I started modeling and traveling and I, I was on sets and I, I just felt, 
you know, I just felt like I belonged there. Aww. I was like, this is where I'm meant to be. This is so much fun. This is what I want to do. Um, my sister, my little sister and I, we grew up playing dress up together and, you know, always imagining we were, you know, fairies or mermaids or, you know, all yeah. that fun stuff you do. And so I just feel like my modeling career is an extension of all of that when I was a child. I, the, one of the most fun things is trying on clothes and dressing up and, you know, playing characters and doing different things all day long. I will say the the one thing I don't like is trying on jeans. <laughs> Okay. That's the one thing that I like yeah. if you do a denim campaign or like yeah. a denim shoot, it's like jeans off and on all day yeah. long. Everything else is really fun. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, I think joke, most but... of America and myself would agree with that <laughs> yeah. in, in life, period. I like order like a pair of jeans and I'm like, in one jean, I'm in one size and then another I pair know. from a co another company. I'm like three sizes up. I'm like, how does this? It doing, makes no sense. Yeah. It's just, doing that all day long. Yeah. It's, it's a joy. It's yeah. so fun. No, it's, it's a workout in itself. Yeah, exactly. But no, I love my job and I think it's, it's where I'm meant to be and what I'm meant to be doing. So when school got to be too much and I kind of had to pick between one or the other because I'm from Colorado and our school systems there don't have this similar, they don't have anything in place for, you know, child actors and yeah. kids in entertainment like right. they do in California or even in, in New York state, they have all of these things that you can do and you can remain in school and still work. But yeah. where I was from, we didn't have that support. And also in the modeling industry, it's not a union thing. We don't have a union like SAG or any of that. Mm -hmm. So there was no regulation and there was no way to, to, to do both. Yeah. And I did do homeschooling and I, did online school for a while, but it also didn't work because you have to put in an hour for each class. So that's six hours a day and I'm on set for 12 to 15 hours. So when yeah. am I supposed to do my schoolwork? Yeah. And if I'm on an airplane and I'm in a different country and I can't yeah. get a hold of the teacher and all these time zones and I have all these questions and the test is scheduled at this time and I have to wake up at three o'clock in the morning to take it. It was, <laughs> oh, wow. you know, it just wasn't working. And it got to a point where my, my mom and my dad were like, you know, this is going really well. She's, you know, making money. She paid taxes. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> maybe we should see if this is what she wants to do or like pursue yeah. this. So then they asked me, you know, do you want to stay in school and do modeling part time? Like they come, comes from time to time. And I was like, no, I don't want to stay in school. I want to, I want to do this. And no. My parents were really great and they were really understanding of that. And I think, you know, they were really helpful in trying to figure out a way for me to, you know, if I needed to come back to my education, I could. So I dropped out of high school and I took my GED. And so that way, if I ever decided I, I want to go to college, yeah. I could, yeah. I could continue my education, but I never did. Yeah. You know, I did the same thing. So yeah. after sophomore year, I, yeah, got my GED. I took, um, I did like six months of like, um, like online college stuff mm -hmm. and then was like, okay, what am I doing? Yeah. <laughs> but if I ever want to go back, yeah. I'm ready. Yeah. yeah. Do you ever feel like you, like, was there any part of you that felt like you missed out because you were like not in school, like prom or like any of that stuff or friends? Did you ever feel like you were missing out then or were you just like loving life and super excited about modeling? Sometimes I definitely felt you know, bummed out that I was missing yeah. school dances or, you know, you know, all of those fun things that kids do, miss yeah. my friends, all that stuff. But yeah. then as I started working more and having more experiences, I started to no longer relate to them because yeah. they didn't understand what I was doing. And I didn't understand why they were so hung up on some of these things. I was like, well, that doesn't matter anymore to yeah. me. And so after a while, I just kind of felt like I didn't even want to go go and do it anymore because I was like, well, this is just so much more fun anyway. Yeah. And, you know, I was meeting so many amazing young models and young girls as well doing what I was doing. And we were bonding more because they were doing what I was doing. Yeah. So I was on set with, you know, other models and I, I was yeah. like, well, you know exactly what's going on, yeah. you know, so... I think I made a lot of friends like in my industry instead. So then yeah. it didn't really matter as much anymore, but there was definitely times so where I would, you know, yeah. I was bummed because, Oh, I didn't, I wanted to go to that dance, but I think that was sort of in the very beginning before yeah. 
as like when I officially dropped out and it was like, well, I'm not going to see my friends every day. I'm not yeah. going to class. I'm not yeah. involved in any of this stuff. And then it slowly became less and less of an, of a, you know, a thought, a thought in my mind. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, you, you did high school a little bit, but there's like, I'll talk about like a memory that I did in high school. And he was like, you would do that. I'm like, yeah, that's what everyone did. But like, it's funny. Cause I had like my full normal high school experience. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's always funny that I learn something new every day. Yeah. I feel like we do something and he's like, Oh, we're not going to let our kids do that. I'm like, I did it and I turned out fine. <laughs> um, with modeling, I know a lot of people like can struggle with body image or comparison. How has your experience with that been? I think for me, it's been pretty good so far. Um, I'm really lucky because I think my family really helped me, you know, they were definitely around me all the time. My mom came with me everywhere I went mm -hmm. and traveled with me until I was 17. And then from there, my older sister, who's only one year older than me, she, <laughs> she traveled with me and, you know, I always had somebody with me and I think kind of keeping me grounded and reminding me who I am, like where I'm from, what I'm, that this is supposed to be fun, that I'm doing something that I like yeah. and to not get too caught up in all of that. Um, also because I was so young, I think the timing of everything was, I got really lucky as well. Uh, being a teenager, you know, at nearly six feet tall, you can imagine like, <laughs> you know, I just, yeah. I had, I think a lot of it is just genetic as well for me. So it felt like I didn't have to try really hard to be thin and I got really lucky because I was really young. I think the expectation wasn't on me as much because yeah. I was a child. People didn't put that on me. Oh, you have to be this weight because they're like, well, she's 15. So yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that a lot of girls that I worked with have experienced that though and didn't have, you know, support in that yeah. area. And that's definitely something that I've seen firsthand and witnessed firsthand with a lot of my friends. Um, but I feel really lucky that I had a lot of support. I think that's like the number one thing is like somebody to communicate with, talk about things. You know, my parents never um, set that expectation on me. If things got mm. went that route, they would have pulled me out. You know, we're not yeah. doing that. Yeah. Um, a lot of the way they celebrated me was never, you know, if you do good, you get to have this. It was just if I if I book something, I I booked it. That's great. If I didn't, okay, like on to the next Still, thing, like yeah. no big deal. You know, yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of times, um, you know, I was, I was actually listening to the Brittany snow, um, mm -hmm. podcast with Alex Cooper. Mm -hmm. And it was really incredible hearing her talk about it because she experienced like a lot of that stuff and her openness and the way she was talking about it. I, I've heard that. And I've heard girls, I know women like, who have been through that. And it was yeah. really interesting to sort of like hear her perspective and how, you know, if she did really well, she got rewarded with something like mm -hmm. a milkshake or like a food. And I think that's where sometimes, especially if you're in an, in an industry where your body matters, it's, you're walking like a very fine line. Oh, so, yeah. um, yeah. I'm, I was, I feel really, I'm like so happy that my parents were trying to encourage healthy habits and healthy behaviors. Yeah. Um, I also come from a somewhat uh, sporty background as well. I did gymnastics since I was eight years old. I was terrible at it. I was not a very good <laughs> gymnast. As, as you can see by my height, there's no way I was, I was good. Say, <laughs> like, at some point that had to get challenged. Interesting. interesting. <laughs> Six feet tall. Okay. <laughs> gymnastics. No, I was a terrible gymnast, but I had so much fun doing it. Like it was, it was I just loved it, you know, and yeah. I, I did it since I was eight and you know, you train really hard and you work out pretty much every day since you're eight years old. Yeah. I had a, I have a, um, a really good relationship with exercise. Mm. I I love it. People think I'm crazy. People are going to roll their eyes when they hear me say, oh, I love <laughs> exercising. They're like, oh, okay, sure you do. Oh, right. oh, whatever. <laughs> no, I just think 
I, I grew up really liking sports and being athletic and doing gymnastics was really fun. And mm -hmm. it was really challenging. You know, you do conditioning, you have to train for something, you're some yeah. striving for perfection in some way because you want to get that perfect 10. I definitely never got it. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but I, it was, I, I'm really grateful for that, for having had that it, I think it created a lot of stability going forward and how I look at, you know, being athletic and being, um, sporty and moving my body and yeah. having a good relationship with, um, exercise because I want to feel good, not because of yeah. the way that I look. Yeah. And I think a lot of people have the opposite where they totally. exercise to look a certain way instead of feel a certain way. And there are, don't, don't get me wrong. There are days when, you know, maybe that is what motivates me on. Oh, I need to go to the gym because I need to do this and this and this because, you know, I need whatever. And then I just go, oh, relax. What you know, you, you have to take a beat because that's not why you should exercise, Taylor. You should exercise because it makes you feel good. You know, it makes my brain feel good. It like, yeah. makes me it, like calm down. You know, I, I'm so antsy and like shaking my leg yeah. all the time and can't sit still. And let's say just being able to move around and get that energy out, I think like really calms my mind, calms, you know, obsessive thoughts. It can really help with all that stuff. So yeah. I definitely think my, my, uh, my sporty yeah. side helped with all, with all of that stuff as well. Do you notice if you like fall out of a routine, um, with exercise that it affects your mental health as well? Yeah. Yeah. hundred oh, percent. Sure. I mean, I just started, I just, I just started walking. I just started walking <laughs> Wow. <laughs> with intention Look at that. <laughs> because you know, that was my problem. That was my thing is I rely so much on exercise for, like how I meant my head feels, yeah. but then I travel so much and it's just, what if I don't feel like going to the gym? That's okay. You don't have to go to the gym every day. That's, that's also unhealthy. You know what I mean? Don't yeah. stress yourself out. You're like, Oh my God, oh, I have to, if I don't, then I'm going to feel this way. Da, 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 da. Yeah. So, um, I think I just started walking with intention to just walk and that be my exercise, whether that's on a treadmill, walking through the city, whatever yeah, yeah. it is. I've moved my body. It's really low impact. I take my dog with me and we go on a walk and yeah. I listen to something, whether that's music or a podcast or an audio book, mm. I'm listening, I'm, you know, looking around, seeing the sights or yeah. if I'm yeah. in a hotel, I go down to, if there, if there is a gym, I can just walk on the treadmill and like watch sex in the city. I don't know, whatever yeah. it is I want to do, See, you know, I've been wanting to watch sex in the city cause I haven't like watched it. So anyways, you need to, it's really great. I'm on now. season three. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I was going to ask that same thing. Cause that's, I feel like our biggest struggle is like routine, getting in that good routine with like working out, but then we travel and then we're like, yeah, it's and then just like, like something throw, always happens to throw always. off the routine. Always. And then it's so like, then it's so annoying to, you know, get back into it. But And then but, you're hard on yourself because you haven't done this and you haven't yeah. done that. Yeah, and I'm like... That's, how, but, that's how I'm feeling today. Yeah. I was literally... I was going to ask you, can I'm we go... I'm scared to go to the gym because I know go it's not going to go well. This. Yeah, we're going to pay for it. Yeah, that's okay. But no. But you'll feel great. I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I keep telling myself that. That's something he's been really good with me about because I feel like I am... It's very easy for me to just like get stuck and like not do anything. I'll be like, oh, I have too much work I need to do where, you know, I'm just like, I don't feel like doing it. I'll just like sit. I don't know. I'll, yeah. I'll be up. like, when's the last time you were outside? Like, when's the last time you like. He's really good at like you know, getting me yeah. like up and out, which I, yeah, which I need because I don't know why. I feel like I am trying to find my like love for working out again because I grew up dancing my whole life. So mm -hmm. I was like the same as you with like gymnastics. I was like you know, working out all the time, dance every day. And then when I was done dancing, I was still teaching like Pilates and like bar. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I just like got burnt out by it, like yeah. just from all of it. And I've been trying to like find that like love for it again, which I feel like we, we started like working out with a trainer and I feel like it's been, he's like really like kind yeah. and like really supportive and like encouraging. And, um, it's like been enjoyable for me again, but yeah. I'm still like trying to like waiting for it to like click it yeah. takes a minute ahead yeah we were getting in a good groove we'll, we, we we'll, will we'll hop back in it we will we go out of town for like 
two days this week and then we come back and then we're like here for like a couple months. We're in it. I'm locked in. Maybe we do a 30 hard. Oof. Or instead of 75. You ever done one of those? 75 hard. I've done a whole 30 okay. before in the past just for like, because you're supposed to do it for food sensitivities. Yeah. Mm. And I was feeling something was going on. Yeah. And then my parents suggested it. They were like, have you ever done whole 30? Because that's supposed to be really good for yeah, you know, f- finding out if you have interesting a food aversion or yeah, like a sensitivity or something. I don't yeah, know. it's not like an allergy, but your body can sometimes yeah. respond negatively to certain foods. Yeah. yeah, so I did that for a bit, and then you know that was helpful. <laughs> I guess what it was, what <laughs> what gluten, huh? really? Oh. But I feel like everybody is like a little I know. Yeah. gluten adverse. You know, it's just. I know. Have you like gone gluten free or? Yeah, be, be, really? I have. Yeah. Wow. Do you but notice a difference? Yes, definitely. Oh, wow. yeah. I still eat it sometimes. Though. Right. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. It just hurts a little. I'm I'm lactose intolerant, <laughs> but I was like born lactose intolerant. Like I've never been able to have milk or like anything like that. And now that it's like a very trendy thing, which is something I'm thankful for because I only had like rice mm. milk growing up. And yeah. now there's like almond, oat, cashew, all these things. Yeah. It must be so but hard, no cheese. When I know I still kind of eat Same. cheese, but just my tummy. <laughs> yeah, you can, definitely cheat. My tummy can digest that a little more because it's like not processed, but pasteurized. Pasteurized, maybe yeah. fermented. No, no one quote me on the word. I don't know what it is. Me neither. But if I have like if when I go to like a coffee place and they make my drink, I have to like watch them to make sure they don't put yeah. regular milk because sometimes messed up a couple times and it's been bad. Yeah, not fun. Yeah, it's it's no bueno. Um. Okay. All right. Something. All three of us tailors have had to endure is the loss of a pet, Mm. which is very rough. Yes. And you have had to deal with that within the last year, Mm -hmm. losing Tate. Was was his illness sudden or had it been a journey? It was very sudden. Really? Yeah. So he was was nine years old and I sort of – noticed that he was doing some strange things that weren't very Tate like Mm. for about a week. He was, well, one thing was very Tate like he had a very sensitive stomach. So sometimes he would just throw up his food because he ate too fast or something. And, um, so he was like, he was throwing up his food almost every day. And I was like, well, it's not that weird, but every day that's kind of weird. And then a couple days later he was like drinking water excessively Like he seemed really thirsty all the time and then he was drinking all this water and then he would walk away and then an hour later he would, he threw up the water and I was like, "Hmm, that's not good. And then a couple of days after that, he had, he had incontinence and he wet the bed and I was like, okay, that is really strange. That's not very Tate-like. So I took him to the doctor and they ran a bunch of tests and, you know, checked him out and took a a blood test and then they ran his, his blood test. And, um, right away after taking him to the vet, they said he was really dehydrated. So they sent me home with these saline packs because dogs have this pouch under their skin where they can absorb water through their skin Hmm. and it's faster than them drinking it. So I had this, like, it looked like an IV drip of this bag and with a thing and a needle. And I had to like poke it through his skin and like squeeze the bag into his skin and it made this like lump on his back. What? And that was supposed to help him get... Oh, Angel. It's very nice. Sorry. <laughs> very distracting. <laughs> you know I'm talking about my she, Angel. She, she did. Was, yeah, she came over right That's away. That's very sweet. Thank you. Thanks for being here. For me. <laughs> um, so I we were administering the um, hydration packs to get him rehydrated while we were awaiting the results from the blood test. And then the blood test came back and it said he had... Um, his calcium levels were off in some way. I can't remember if they were too high or too low or something was wrong with his calcium levels. So then they wanted to do another test that was that was more of a deep dive on that. And, you know, this is taking another week and he's like getting sicker and sicker. I'm like, this really? is so weird. What is going on? And ultimately they thought maybe at one point he could have Addison's disease. Like they didn't really know what it was. And then I noticed that he... I like touched him and I like, you know, I loved like he was chunky, chunky and I loved to like squeeze him and like, I was like, I'm going to eat your face. Okay. Okay. That doesn't mean eat my face. (laughs) No, no, no. Yes, it does. (laughs) She says, hi, dad. Hey, can you go lay down? We're trying to talk. need some love. Hey, the tailors are trying to talk. (laughs) You be polite. That's not polite. (laughs) 
so he kept getting sicker and sicker and we're just waiting for these tests to come back so i, I love to like squish him and like, like we know him and um i kind of like grab like grab him near his like neck his little chunk right, right there you know and i grabbed him and he kind of like whipped around really quick and like tried to bite me also not Tate like he wow. never bit me yeah. ever and i was like oh that's really weird it seems like he's in pain there so then i I'm like, that's really strange. I wonder if he has like an injury because he had a, he pulled a, um, like a muscle in his back when he was a puppy from like running and sliding and the, yeah. he had a back injury. So I was like, oh, I wonder if he's like hurt again. That's really weird. So I take him back because I'm like, I think there's something wrong with his neck. Like I grabbed him and he was like in pain and they're like moving his neck around and, um, they, they push it to the left and they push it really hard and he like winces mm. and he's like, snarling he's like in a lot of pain on his neck so then she's like okay i think we should do an x-ray and i was like okay so we we do the x-ray and then that's when we finally get the cancer diagnosis because through the x-ray they found a mass in his chest um near his lymph node like in his armpit i guess mm -hmm. and then they were like okay that is a very clear sign to us that he may have lymphoma so you need to take him to an oncologist and start you know doing chemotherapy and all that stuff and i mean it was it was really wild and that was within 2 weeks all right. of a sudden it was he has cancer mm. so then from the day of his cancer diagnosis to the day that he passed it was a month wow so it was it was very, very fast. And it was all around the time of our wedding. So he was um, in the ICU the week before we were supposed to go home to Colorado and get married. And I, I was just, I was devastated because I didn't know if he was going to make it or not, you know? So that was really tough to sort of be experiencing those emotions yeah. and being at the same time trying to like trying celebrate and yeah. be excited that be I'm happy. getting married and like looking forward to getting married and doing all that. So it was very, it was very strange. It's like, it's, it's so weird when you experience two things at the exact same time and like how sometimes emotions can be so linear and so parallel, like two things can be true at once where you're just on one hand, I'm, I'm about to get married. This is about to be one of the most exciting days of my life but then on the other hand tate might not make it to the wedding and like that's that was terrifying but you know he did he pulled through because they know like he knew i i looked him in the eyes when he was in the hospital and i was like if you don't want to do this then i'll let you go like i don't want him to live like that you know but if you want to fight and you're and you are okay with that, then you, you need to let me know. And I said that to him. And then the next day he had a, cause he was doing the CHOP protocol, which is a very, like, it's kind of aggressive for like treatment of uh, chemotherapy in dogs. Mm. And essentially it's just to make, make sure that it keeps the cancer at bay so they can live the best quality of life as they can for as long as they can. Yeah. And, um, he wasn't eating. So for them to administer the chemotherapy and he has no nutrients in his body, it was very hard in his body. Mm. So they wanted to put in a feeding tube so they could at least put some nutrients in him and then see how he responds to the chemotherapy. So they did that. They put the feeding tube in and this was the day, the next day after I was like, like, are you, let me know and yeah. we'll do whatever you need. And they did the feeding tube. They administered his like first, you know, dose of nutrients and then, he had his chemotherapy treatment. I went in the next day to see him, different dog. He was, it was Tate. His tail was wagging. Oh, wow. He was like walking around. He had energy. He was, you know, moving. He, he I, I was like, oh my God, wow. this is crazy. So then his doctor was like, okay, we're going to keep him one more night. We're going to just check on him and make sure everything's okay. They were like teaching me how to do the feeding tube, administer his medication through the feeding tube, all this stuff. And essentially we were able to bring him to Colorado with us and he was fine. And then wow. actually like days later, like two days later, he, the feeding tube was taken out because he started eating again. He was eating chicken. He was eating sweet potato. And on the day of the wedding, he woke up and he was just like, it was like, he wasn't sick at all. 
And I think he knew he was like, she needs me there. I'm going to get there and I'm going to be with her. And it was kind of amazing because he got, we got to, you know, have Tate with us on our wedding day. And I feel like for him, it was so nice because he got to sort of say goodbye or, you know, have a moment with almost every single person he's ever loved or who's ever loved him, mm. you know, cause people loved Tate. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like he was such a part of my life and people just, some people ask me to this day, if they, they aren't aware that he passed, they're like, Oh my God, how's your dog? How's Tate? And then I have to say, Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, t- I lost Tate last year. And then I see them just break down and they're like, Oh mm. my God, Tate is gone. Like they can't believe it, you know? So yeah. he was really special, special angel. So when you had posted about him, I hadn't even known who Tate was just from Taylor following you. Yeah. Like he would like show me him. And then when you posted that he passed, Taylor was like, oh my gosh, like Taylor's dog, like, like it was like sad for us. Yeah. And like, I've, I never, I, you never met him. It's cause I felt yeah. like he was like an extension of you. Yeah. He like was. he was a part of you. Mm-hmm. So Huge like my, part. my heart just freaking crumbled for you. He was with me for, you know, so much of my life, the formative years of my life. You know, he was with me yeah. since I was 18 to 27. Yeah. You know, that's me going from a teenager to a young adult, you know, and I, I did so much life with him and he was with me for so much. And he was just, he was, he went everywhere with me. He was my best friend, you know? So yeah, to lose him was pretty gutting. What has your grieving process been like? Honestly, I, it comes in waves. I think grief to me is, I say it's kind of like an ocean because sometimes it can be really calm and really still and you're just kind of floating in it. And, you know, it can sometimes be really serene and peaceful and then something can happen. You know, somebody says something or you are at a place that reminds you of that moment or reminds you of a person or for me, Tate. And then it's just the storm, the waves are crashing and it's you're just trying to stay afloat. Yeah. And I think, you know, for me, it's just been trying to be patient with that and being feeling what I'm supposed to be feeling what I'm feeling, I think, which is really hard to do because yeah. I think naturally we just want to compartmentalize and put things away and yeah. make, put things in little boxes and, or at least yeah. I do anyway. I or know. fight those feelings yeah. or pretend they don't exist yeah. or ignore it. But for me, it was really helpful to sort of just sit in it and just feel it and be like this, acknowledge what it is that made me the waves start crashing again and being like, okay, this is what made me feel like that. Maybe I need to take a step back from this experience. Maybe, maybe I need to uh, avoid this area for a little bit and then, you know, confront it when you're ready because I do think it's important to confront things as well, but never went, never like push yourself to do something you're not ready to do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, for me, it's been just patience with myself, trying to feel things when I feel them You know, if if something reminds me of Tate or I just want to sit, I have like a little, it's like a little shrine or like a memorial of him in my house. And it's just pictures of him, his paw print, his favorite sweater, you know, his favorite treats. I like leave him treats and then Salem comes and eats them. But (laughs) (laughs) He's okay. Tate Tate was good at sharing. (laughs) He doesn't mind. Um, And I just kind of sit there with with him and I, I talk to him and I like... You know, if I just, if I'm really sad and I'm missing him, I just sit there and I cry and I tell him I miss him. I'm going to cry now because I'm I'm a Pisces. I'm sorry. I'm so emotional. I'm a Pisces too. Oh, girl. (laughs) Get it. Let it out. Oh, I was crying. I was crying earlier. That was, yeah, it's just that we both have had to like, we both have had to deal with it, but more so with like family dogs, Mm -hmm. like with Ram. She's like, she's our baby. I mean, Lily too, but she like we got her together and Mm -hmm. you know that's like something that we we think about often and you know it's just people will be like oh it's just a dog but like dogs are like we don't deserve dogs no and we say that a lot but they like I mean she knew she literally like hopped up next to you when you started talking about him like we just don't she just wanted to check on me I know we don't we just don't deserve them has there been any like tools or like resources or anything that you've kind of like implemented to help you work through um, your grief? Yeah, I 
I write a lot. Oh, wow. For me, oh. it's writing because and reading because, and also obviously therapy. I go to, I see a therapist and I've seen one for seven years, mm. but not everybody can go to therapy. You know, it's, it's unfortunately not accessible to everyone. Yeah. So that is a tool, but I think other tools that maybe are a little more accessible to, to, to hopefully everyone is um, writing and reading. Anybody can oh. write and anybody can hopefully can have yeah. access to, to reading materials. So yeah. for me, that was really helpful because I write letters to him and I like talk to him and I write things down and I feel if I'm feeling an overwhelming sense of emotion, sometimes, you know, if you want to go to therapy, you have to schedule an appointment with your therapist and like, and then yeah. you can talk to them about it and all these things, or, you know, I can talk to my husband about s stuff, but sometimes it's more cathartic for me to talk to myself or to talk to Tate or, yeah. you know, maybe the person that you've lost in your life i just write things to him when i'm feeling wow. them because it's kind of just an immediate way to address that yeah, emotion release and release it so i think for me a great tool is writing i love that and i think you know if someone doesn't know where to start in processing grief i think being able to write about it is a really really great first step because you know knowledge is power and having access to people and being able to talk to people for sure but if there's no one for you to talk to talk to that person you lost talk to them write to them talk like talk to yourself read it out loud you know and say things out loud because even if there's nobody there listening and talking back to you it's it's still really helpful to get started and I love reading a lot of the things I learn is through reading so you know if you can read books about grief or read something about loss or if you don't like to read and you want to listen instead hopefully you know i think that's a really great way to kind of get started in it and something that's really been really helpful for me mm. um is sort of just reading about things yeah you know so that's great. Wow. that writing is like such a profound like it's literally so simple but both of us went oh like when you said i write like i feel like both of us were like yeah like it's so simple like mm -hmm. you're so right? Like anyone can do it, whether you're writing it on your phone, like on a piece of paper, whatever it is, yeah. but that's, voice dictation. If yeah. you don't, if your hand hurt, you know what yeah. I mean? Sometimes I do that. Cause I'm like, my hand's cramping and I'm yeah. like writing 18 pages of things. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> such good advice. Yeah. That's no, awesome. That's, yeah. Um, well we've been talking about him all day, but, um, since you have adopted a beautiful little angel Salem, um, was, I imagine Salem was, you know, a key in, um, you know, helping you through that grief journey or was it challenging at first? He was a savior to me. Yeah. Um, I, when I lost Tate, I thought I will never love again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so dramatic. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I really felt that I felt, I, how will I ever, how will I ever love anyone ever again people are always like it's a dog taylor i'm like you have you don't know what he meant to me like you don't yeah. get it like he was my heart my heart was ripped out of my chest when i lost him and i thought i will never love another being the way i love tate ever again yeah. never again i i i i held him in my arms i watched him leave this world and i thought there goes my heart <laughs> so dramatic oh my god but no. it was like that's what i felt and i i felt i was devastated i screamed i cried ah. like my husband was just holding me because he didn't like we didn't know what to do he was gone you know and um i i was feeling like i, I don't know how i'm gonna do this again how i'm gonna love another dog ever again and um I had already scheduled to do this volunteer trip with Animal Aid USA, which is the organization that we work with. We're partnered with at Tate and Taylor. And I already planned this before Tate even got sick. You know, we were going to go. I was going to bring Tate with me. Like, wow. you know, we were going to do this together. And um, when Tate passed, it was about three three weeks to maybe a month later that I was meant to go on this trip. And I... I almost, I almost didn't go. I didn't want, yeah. I didn't want to because yeah. I, I felt, how am I going to be around all these dogs? There's, you know, there's 250 plus dogs in this shelter at one point sometimes. 
how am I going to do this? This is going to be hard for me. Yeah. Um, and you know, my husband, he was really encouraging. He was like, you should go. It would be really helpful. Like you should go because it'll be nice for you to be around that energy again and also do some good because you know, it's, it's a shelter. These are dogs that yeah. are strays on the street. People just drop them off on the side of the road They're They take them out of kill shelters. They're on the list to die that day. And, and, um, you know, people r rock up to the animal aid base camp with a truck full of dogs and they're just like, we don't want them. And they drop them off there. It's, actually yeah. crazy that people can like do this it's wild yeah. so um you know he was like you should go because you know you'll be around all these dogs like it'll make you feel good it's like helping like go you know you yeah. have all this pain and sadness like it'll feel really good to yeah to be a part of something and to help and i was like yeah you're right you're right i'm getting in my head i'm being you know too emotional over this like i should just do this it'll be good to, for me to confront this yeah um so i went and, you know, I'm having the best time. I was so surprised really? actually because I felt so happy there. It's such an amazing cause what they're doing and to witness firsthand the actual rescuing of the dogs before yeah. they even get into adoption agencies, before they're in, they're not, they don't even get to a shelter, these dogs. It's amazing because wow. they take them off the street. They find them in boxes behind walmart they take pup there's puppies there's every dog you could possibly imagine they yeah. have and it's incredible to be there i went up to literally every single dog and was like nice to meet you and they, <laughs> i was like i have to introduce myself to everyone and i was just like i was so happy i was like oh my god i wow i'm this is amazing this feels great mm. and um you know, I'm walking around all the pens and I'm seeing all the dogs and like saying hello when I get to the pen kind of closer to the front and it has these two dogs in it. One looks like a um, chow chow sort of golden retriever, uh, kind of a mixed dog, shepherdy. She has like pointy ears. Yeah. Her name was Lucy and they called her the happiest dog in the world because she danced. Oh my gosh. She, oh for, yes. Dancing all the time. <laughs> so cute when she they do that. She was so happy and in her little, you know, friend in the, uh, in their little pin was Salem. Wow. This, oh and gosh. I just saw this dog and I just saw this all black German shepherd dog with these huge ears, mm. huge ears and this like little slinky tail. And I look at him and I think, oh my gosh, you look like a cat. <laughs> I was like, you look like a black cat. <laughs> and then I was like, what's that? What's that cat from that show, Sabrina, the Teenage Witch? And I was like, oh, Salem. No I was way. like, you are Salem. Oh You're that black gosh. cat. Oh my gosh, I love that. And I was so drawn to him and oh. I just couldn't, I kept going back to his little pen to his little house and I was standing there just staring at him yeah. and I was like that is the I was just so I don't know why I was like I just I'm so drawn to him yeah and there's hundreds of dogs there and and even Lucy she's the sweet she was so mm. sweet and so happy people were like why didn't you get both of them I was like well, <laughs> that's a lot <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's yeah. a lot for me to take on yeah going between New York and Nashville and all that so I was like yeah um but I for some reason I was just like really drawn to Salem and actually Lucy had already been adopted because oh. all the agencies they they get the dogs in advance before they're brought back to New Jersey so some of the dogs have already been adopted on the list and Lucy was had already been taken so she oh, wow. did get go to a home already she she yeah. was good, <laughs> I mean, she was good guys. everyone so calm down <laughs> calm down she Lucy's was fine chilling. she she She's was dancing chilling. away her family was she went straight she got off that bus and she went straight home so Aww. and that happens with a lot of those a lot with a lot of the dogs there so um and uh i i just was really connected to salem and uh his name was samson in the okay. shelter they called him samson that was his name on his like his certificate yeah his birth, yeah. Yeah, yeah birth certificate he doesn't have a birth certificate <laughs> um his little like thing it said samson and i was like he's not a samson that's a that's a cat i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> and um i i could not stop thinking about him when we left i just kept i was like that dog was amazing i just loved him they gave me some alone time with him and i you know brought him to his little room and he just leaned on me right away he just leaned oh. and like it, his all oh, his whole weight he just leaned he just like relaxed into mm. my arms also he's massive so yeah. he was just like melted 
into me and I was like, <laughs> I am done. <laughs> um, my heart is screaming. Yeah. <laughs> and he was just so chill. He just laid down. He was like, mm. oh. and I was like, oh, he's so sweet. He's so tender and gentle. And um, I just, I was obsessing over him. And my husband's like, we can't get a dog right now. You know, <laughs> it's too much. He's too big. He's all these things. And I was like, you're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. And, and then we were like, well, maybe we could just foster him for a little bit before mm. he finds his home, you know? Yeah. And, uh, we were like, okay, I mean, that's a good idea. Let's foster him. Let's see how it goes with him. And, you know, well, we'll hang out with him for a little bit more since you love him so much. So we fostered him for two weeks and um, it was the best two weeks of my life, you know? And even, you know, my husband, he was like, oh my gosh, this dog, he's so special. Aww. And he fell in love with him. I kind of had a, an immediate yeah. reaction and connection to him. Yeah. And then I think it took my husband a minute to be like, oh, I get it. Oh, oh, I see it. And it was actually him. He was one who was like, because we had to take him back after the two weeks to back to the um, people who had him f at the adoption agency. They were like, well, we need him back because we have to do all these another round of vet po appointments because he I think we have a home for him. So we had to take him back. And then my husband dropped him off and, you know, they come out and they take him and he's like walking away. And, you know, he's like looking back at him and he and my, my husband is just like, Oh my God, what am I doing? What have I done? Oh my God. I, no, that's our, we need him. Like that's our dog. And he comes back, he comes back to me and he's like, he, that's our dog. I was like, Oh my gosh. Yes. I was like, <laughs> you said it. You said it. I did it. You said it. So oh, you can't get mad at me in, in yeah. six months when you're like, why did we get this dog? I'd be like, cause oh. you said no. Um, so wow. we were like, okay, okay. It's our dog. So we, we call them. We were like, actually, stop talking to the other family like we want him <laughs> he's our dog and then they were like okay okay amazing yeah and they were like okay well he has a couple of appointments you have to do all these things first and then you know in a week come back and get him and I was like okay great so that was it and then Salem <laughs> and then Salem came into our lives <laughs> oh and my gosh. it got to the point where he was dropping him off yeah and like walking away yeah, yeah. oof I know. I mean, I knew right away. I was like, yeah, yeah. but it, you know, it, was, it took, it was, it's a lot of responsibility. I understand that yeah. to, you know, take on a dog and yeah, especially a, a much larger dog than what we were used to with Tate, you know? So mm. it was a really big decision and you know, you can't take that lightly. So it did take us some time together to decide that that was what was right for us. And then I think for him, the realization was when it was, Oh, maybe he's going potentially to another family. Whoa. Like, yeah. What about us? So, yeah. oh and it was kind of that for him. So I was happy he came to that conclusion. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Salem has been a huge blessing in my life and has opened me up again to, you know, falling in love with a dog. And it's shown me that I was right. I will never love another dog like Tate, but that's okay. You know, that was my relationship with Tate and that was special. And that was him and me. So I have... I have so much more clarity on that and understanding of why I was feeling that. And with Salem, I love him so much, but in such a different way because yeah. he's such a different dog. He's well, a whole yeah. other personality, you know? Yeah. And that was a huge relief too, because he is so different. So yeah. he brings something really different to my life and he's teaching me completely different things than Tate did. So for, for him, I'm so grateful and he was so helpful in a lot of the grieving and the healing process, you know, being able to learn how to love again and like open up and get to know each other and have a whole different relationship. It was, it's special. That's really cool. Oh my gosh. I love that. I can't wait to meet him. I'm going out <laughs> after this. Um, okay. Tate and Taylor. I want to know what was your like inspiration behind this? Like, I feel like going into the pet space was probably like a little scary because yeah. there's a lot of, there's a lot of that, but what, what was your inspiration behind that? I think for me, obviously my inspiration is Tate yeah. and the love I have for him and, you know, our relationship. And I know other people have that love for their dogs and it's a dedication to that. It's a dedication to that dog in your life. That's like your soul dog, you know, like mm -hmm. this is, this is your 
angel. This is the love of your life. You know, somebody so special to you. Um, so it, it's just a, a dedication to that love. And it's our, also the mission behind our company. You know, we, we know that love, we know what it means to care for something like that. And we know that you want to do the best for them. You want to treat them the best that you possibly can and take care of them in the best possible way. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was kind of being able to create something based off of the foundation of that yeah. and like building on that and building a, a community of people who also feel the same way. And, you know, sort of what we do at Tate and Taylor is find some of the, the most amazing there's incredible brands out there. There's some amazing entrepreneurs and founders that are doing innovative, incredible things in the pet space, but it's such a big, oversaturated, a little bit of an overwhelming industry. You don't know where to go for anything yeah, yeah. anything yeah. Yeah. not to generalize but basically anything well, yeah like dog food when you go into the store there's like Hundreds, so many like so many kibble options. wise where but then you know there's where all do the start? dog delivery there's like should i be making my dog like there's there's you, so many things and there's no, there's very contradicting opinions there's no yeah. like there's no source there's yeah. no place to go where you know okay well this is this is we know from this place it's great yeah and I wanted to do that because I felt like it was something that was missing and something that I wish existed with Tate, especially mm. when he was sick. Yeah. And now with Salem, it's just like, I'm so glad I'm creating this because, you know, I get to talk to other to experts who know about, you know, food allergies and dog training and, you know, what to feed them and why and, and why this product is good and why the shampoo and conditioner is because, you know, we're, we're talking with brands who are doing all the work. You know, yeah. who are doing what they should be doing to create a safe company for dog for their pets, and I think, you know, that's like one thing that I think is so lacking is you know there's just so many options and we don't know why. So we love being able to highlight the brands and highlight the founders and say this is their story. This is why they started their company. They went through this experience with their dog or you know a pet, and they developed this product because of that. So you know, it's it's amazing to be able to highlight people who are doing such incredible things and give them a platform and a space to showcase yeah. the innovation and the work that they're putting in to do better for pets. So yeah. that's, that's the mission. And, and that's the goal with Tate and Taylor is to just be able to curate and find some of the best products with these amazing brands doing great things. Um, and then also like we're very cause driven and we have, we have a mission as well in terms of rescue. We, we have a rescue partner that, you know, where I got Salem and mm. Wade, they're amazing. And, um, with the buddy fund, which is, um, uh, uh, that is connected to the Schwarzman animal medical center in New York. And that's where Tate was treated for, um, his lymphoma. Mm. And the buddy fund is an amazing program because I saw firsthand, you know, just how much it, of a financial toll it can take to put a, um, an animal yeah. through chemotherapy. And once they're diagnosed with cancer, yeah. it's, it's a lot. And to have to make calls and decisions based on, am I going to take on this financial burden or do I get to spend this extra time with, with someone I love? Yeah. So I don't think that people should ever have to make that decision or have to yeah. deal with that. And the buddy fund is so amazing because they mm -hmm. they help subsidize the cost of um cancer treatment in, in animals there or they can even cover the cost in total of wow. the cancer treatment so being able to give back to an organization like that is really meaningful to me after seeing what you know tate went through and, and what it meant to go through that wow. i just want to help other people you yeah. know because i received a lot of support from people when tate was sick and when i lost tate so i just how can I give back so that people never have to feel, ha never have to feel that? Yeah. So that's sort of like the mission behind that, you know, why we have the, the sweat sets and the hoodies and the hats. It's like, yeah. you know, it's a, a great way to spread a message and, you know, show what we're doing and in, in the physical world. Oh, it's a cute sweater. Where'd you get it? Oh, well, it's this. It starts a conversation about yeah. the buddy fund and what they're doing. Yeah. And also financially, all the money that we make, we are donating back to the buddy fund. So it's supporting a cause as well as it's out in the world and it's like starting that conversation and, yeah. you know, it's in the world and people can see it. So, yeah. you know, it's really that's special that's that we get awesome. to do that. Yeah. I was going to say, that's like, that's such a cool thing that you have like decided to take on like with your platform. Like so many people have a platform, but like that you fully have like chosen to like dive into this and use your platform for something that you feel so passionately about and something yeah. that is like so needed. Um, 
it's just it's so special and you guys do have like some of the cutest stuff on yeah. there we were talking about <laughs> it earlier i was like browsing browsing for rem because i think she yeah. could she could use a couple of the things oh, on there yes. you, you know it's, it's th there's some really fun and cute things and some really great functional products and it's yeah. just like cool brands i mean some of the, some of them are just I speak with these the with these founders and they're amazing. Their stories, what they know, the work they put into it. I I know every single one. We're really small right now, but we're obviously going to grow and 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 branch out and you know, we're talking to more people right now. So, you know, we don't have a lot of product on the website, but when we do everything we put on there is with intention yeah. and with with for for a reason and we have conversations, we speak to them, we're like tell us about your product tell us why you started it we want to know about you and you know talk to you and yeah. how can we support what how what can we talk about your product that is a really important thing that maybe is lacking on other sites because i think it's just a bit of a wash you know you type in you yeah. know dog cleaner or you know yeah i mean dog shampoo yeah thousands of results come up. Well, why should i pick this yeah. yeah if you hopefully we can help clarify as to like why we picked yeah. you know the flu the floof on our on our website, the shampoo and conditioner pack, it's all dermatologist tested and Michael's amazing. He's an incredible founder, you know, and he has a great story. So wow. that's why we picked it, you know, and that's why we, we looked into it. We were talking to him. We hear from him. We know he's done the work. So yeah. it's a great product. That's so cool. Yeah. I could go yeah. on and on and on. It's so, <laughs> it's so special. Yeah. I love it. All, I, all the things dogs. <laughs> you're so passionate about it and I love it. And I mean, we love dogs. So yeah. it's fun getting to. That's amazing what you're doing. <laughs> have um her in here acting like a fucking spaz <laughs> no, we you're, love it you're fine with it <laughs> you're gorgeous She's like, i just want to play well yeah i mean your your mission with tate and taylor is just so special and remy thanks you as well mm. um but yeah we're just really thankful to have you here today so oh thank yeah. you guys thanks for like being so vulnerable and like oh, sharing too thank you so for sweet. having me I mean, no. you know this is a lovely space i feel safe <laughs> i feel protected there's a dog here <laughs> yeah. like oh, yeah. my dreams have come true <laughs> you come back like, whenever you want <laughs> this is my only my third podcast i'm like this isn't so bad <laughs> maybe i could do this more you know i don't really do a lot of long form interviews like this like i yeah. i'm a pretty I like to be pretty private and stuff, yeah. but I think that, you know, with something that I love and care about so much, I just feel like I can definitely open up and share about anything that has to do with Tate. I mean, he's yeah. an angel, so yeah. Yeah. I could talk about him all day. <laughs> <laughs> it's so sweet. Yeah. You're amazing. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, guys. So are you.